Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Parissa Gafari. And I'm Ricardo Shepard, and here's your news now. Here's a chance to get to know the mainline towns around Cabrini. Next Saturday, September 6th, students from the area can help celebrate Bryn Mawr Day across from Ludington Library. You can expect to hear live music, taste local food, and shop the sales at surrounding stores. Ever been in a fire engine before? It's one of the many things you can do. We plan to send out a crew to cover the event this weekend and should have a recap of the sights and sounds in next week's location show. Are the students at Cabrini a reflection of the demographics of the area? Last week, we stopped by the Student Diversity Barbecue here on campus to find out more about diversity at Cabrini. On location, for location, my name is Joan Nowiski and I'm here today at the Student Diversity Barbecue. We discussed with students the issue of diversity on campus as well as faculty members to see their ideas about the demographics and diversity here on campus. So diversity, in my own words, really attributes to what someone being unique in their own individual way, whether that's gender, ethnicity, um, their socioeconomic status, their sexual orientation. It, it really, to me, it's just not one particular um, thing. So it really encompasses a range of different attributes that a person or, the, or a group will bring to a campus. Um, diversity is going through growth and knowing that people are who they are and everybody played a part throughout the universe and being on earth. Not only that, but knowing that even if you don't agree for somebody being who they are, at least tolerate it to know that they are who they are and you are who you are. So I think diversity um, at its most simple definition is just kind of a big mix of different kinds of people, right? And I think a lot of times when people first think diversity, they immediately jump to race or sexual orientation. But there's also diversity in um, income and age groups and I think enjoying those differences makes for like an interesting community. So I live in East Falls which is a part of the city um, right past Maniunk and above the Art Museum and it's a very mixed income community and I've lived there for a while and I like it because of that reason. I like the mixed income and I like enjoying in that kind of, living in that kind of environment. Diversity is the celebration of a bunch of different people and their backgrounds and ethnicities and races and genders and sexuality and, and all of that just meshed together and that's diversity. I've been at Cabrini now for about 11 years and over that time I have watched the de demographics change. Um, uh, 11 years ago I think the, the campus was much less diverse um, in terms of uh, students uh, of color on campus and I think we've changed in that manner. I also think that we've changed as far as there are more students here on campus with disabilities and the campus has actually um, changed a lot to make sure that uh, students with disabilities had more greater access to, to things on campus. So in, that, uh, in those terms, I think we've done a really good job uh, of changing for the better. Thanks for checking in with us. I'm Joan Nowiski, on location for location. Now let's get back to the newsroom. Have an athletic side to you? Rock climbing is held every Wednesday at Philly Rock Gym. Admission is free. Vans leave campus at 4.45 p.m. You can register in the Dixon Center. Looking for some fun? The Campus Activities and Programming Board will host open mic night behind the mansion at 7 p.m. Wednesday, September 10th. If it decides to rain, the event will be held in Grace Hall. Sign up to participate in the SEAL office to show off your talent. Do you enjoy baseball? Cabrini Night at the Phillies will be taking place Friday, September 12th. Tickets are free for transfer students in the class of 2018. Upperclassmen can purchase their $10 tickets in the SEAL office. Buses leave at 5 p.m. Catboard will lead a trip to Atlantic City on Saturday, September 20th from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Space is limited. Sign up in the SEAL office. The cost of the trip is $5 for students. Visit the SEAL office for more information. Every year, Cabrini hosts its annual involvement fair during the second week of classes. Let's check in with the crew to see why the involvement fair is an important event for new and returning students to get involved on campus. I think the involvement fair is important not only for freshmen but for all students. They can see the different clubs and activities that are offered. There's new clubs every year so it's a good way to refresh your memory and come out and see what your peers are doing and sign up for something that you're really interested in. 
as a freshman, being here at the Involvement Fair has been really great. I've signed up for a bunch of different clubs. They're all here representing themselves. I uh, get a lot of free stuff, which is always great. And um, it's the best way to get involved on campus. I'm Lisa Podolsky. I'm a programming coordinator for the Center for Student Engagement and Leadership at Cabrini College, also known as SEAL. And I think the, the involvement fair is really important for students because it helps them get involved in things outside of class. Um, it helps them pursue some of their interests that they might not get through academics. They also have opportunities for leadership um, by becoming a president, treasurer, um, just a general member of some of the boards. And they get some skills that they won't get through their academic classes. If you don't be part of school then, you're just going to be another average student sitting in the dorm, not really getting around and getting to know people. Clubs is a great way for people to know you and a great way for you to see your professors in a different light maybe because they might be involved in that club too. You get funds from the school, you can do whatever you need to better yourself and better your education. And that was your trip around the block. So Howard, what's new at sports? Well, Paris, I'll be highlighting the uh, Cabrini's fall sports and um, the Phillies actually made history this week, so I'll be touching on that as well. Hey, so Howard, so how about those uh, Denver Broncos? Ah, Ricardo, the Broncos look like they might be in some trouble with uh, Wells Welkler's suspension, so I'll be touching on that as well. So let's take a look. Now that the first week of classes is under our belts, that means one thing. Fall sports are underway. Let's take a look at exactly what the fall sports have in store for us this season. Uh, I look forward to another great year, not just during the fall, but all the way through the school year. Um, we won eight Colonial States Athletic Conference Championships last year. Men's soccer, women's soccer, and volleyball were picked to win their conference. Uh, I think field hockey was second in the preseason poll, uh, and women's tennis was third in their preseason poll. So I think around the conference, people were looking for our teams to do good things. Um, good. You know what? We were very fortunate last week. The weather was, was uh, cool. This week, it's been a little hot for the first week back to classes, but the girls have been working hard, and we're very excited this weekend to go away to our first tournament. We lost a pretty strong senior class last year. Um, a lot of strong personalities on the team that we cherish and miss a lot this year, but with 16 freshmen coming in, it's definitely an adjustment dealing with that many younger people. It's a lot of time to uh, step up and sort of be a mentor. The immediate goal is this first weekend to get through this tournament. Um, then we take it game to game. I mean, obviously the long-term goal is to get into the CSAC playoffs, you know, and ultimately every girl on this team wants to win that championship. You know, it was very break, you know, heartbreaking last year when we lost in it. So I know that I have a, a group of seniors that are determined to, you know, to make it to the playoffs and hopefully uh, leave their mark on, the, on you know, their season. Uh, things have been going well so far. It's been... Uh... It's been a little bit of a grind, you know, some long days. The guys, uh, the, the guys have been, uh, you know, a little beat up at times, but uh, it's been really successful. I think we have uh, a good core group in, and, uh, you know, I, I think we're, we're set up for a, a good season. Um, well, you know, every year we go through kind of the natural attrition with uh, the seniors graduating and bringing in the new class of freshmen. Uh, you know, the new class of freshmen have looked great once they, once they kind of adjusted to this pace of play and the physicality of the college game. Um, you know, it, it, like I said, it's been a good preseason camp. So. Uh, it's been going good. We've been working hard. Um, we've definitely had to push each other this year. Um, there's a couple new freshmen, so we're trying to get to know them and their playing styles. But we've been working hard, and I think it's going to be a good year. I have about six or seven new freshmen. Um, one transfer who was a senior. She was here her freshman year and came back um, for senior year. So other than that, um, everyone else has been on the team. Um, we're still trying to figure out the lineup. We're not sure what it's going to be yet. Our main goal is to win our fourth straight CSAC championship. Um, <laughs> and we also have another goal, um, which is winning our first NCAA game. Well, our big changes because I'm the new coach. <laughs> so we'll A lot of incoming freshmen, transfers, and some really good additions. Yeah, uh, only three returning players, so I guess you could say there's a huge change in moving forward with the team. Going really well. Um, we've got a lot of good uh, attributes to the team this year, uh, one of them being Coach Parker. He's been a really positive influence on this team this year. 
my goals as a coach are to uh, get these guys to play in the moment and not worry about uh, score, match, play the ball, have fun. Students are interested, they can always uh, come over to the Dixon Center. Um, and definitely if they're interested in uh, trying out for a sport, they want to first contact the coach. Um, find out what the requirements are. We do have some medical requirements that students have to meet before they can try out. If they're interested in intramurals, which we have a lot of, they can come over to the Dixon Center as well. Um, they can talk to Orlin Jesperson, who is the head of our uh, recreation department. He's one of our assistant athletic directors. Um, so really, they just come over here and talk to any one of us. We'll certainly point them in the right direction. On Tuesday, September 2nd, Colts owner Jim Ursay pled guilty to one misdemeanor count of operating a vehicle while intoxicated. The NFL announced that it has fined Ursay half a million dollars along with a six-game suspension. The league has also banned Ursay from representing his Colts during his suspension. So Ursay can say goodbye to tweeting about the Colts, attending owners' meetings, and hopefully he uses better judgment next time. More NFL news, Denver Broncos wide receiver Wes Welker will miss the first four games of the season. And no, it's not because of his concussion problems. Wes Welker tested positive for amphetamines last May. This came as no surprise to the Broncos organization because Welker's efforts to appeal the suspension. With the season right around the corner, the loss of Welker is a tough blow for the Denver offense, but with Manning at the helm and dangerous targets, the Broncos should still be in good shape during Welker's absence. In other news, the Phillies had a historic day against the Atlanta Braves on Monday, September 1st. Cole Hamels and the bullpen made history by throwing a combined no-hitter, the first in Phillies history. They went on to destroy the Braves 7-0. This game marked the first of a three-game series between the Phillies and Braves. Hopefully, the Phillies can continue their dominance. And that was your sports news. Let's send it back over to the news desk with Ricardo. Earlier this week in Arizona, gun instructor Charles Vaca was accidentally shot and killed by a nine-year-old New Jersey girl while showing her how to operate a 9 millimeter submachine gun. The gun recoil was too much for the little girl to handle as she pulled back on the trigger. The gun jerked out of her hands, aiming in Vaca's direction. The Mojave County, Arizona Sheriff's Department says the incident will be classified as an industrial death. This week in Kabul, Afghanistan, Taliban militia attacked an Afghan intelligence service in the city of Jalalabad. The Taliban group initiated the attack with a suicide bombing. Immediately after the bombing, six of the attackers rushed into the building bearing firearms and other explosives. According to a local police spokesperson, all six of the gunmen were found dead after clashing with security forces. According to the province, Top health official, nearly 45 residents of the area were injured by broken windows and collapsed ceilings, which was the result of the bombing. CNN reports reveal over 1,400 cases of child rape and sex trafficking by gangs in Northern England over the past 16 years. It's reported that the town council leader, police and social services knew about the abuse for years, but chose to turn a blind eye. Gangs threatened the children who tried to expose the abuse, and it's still not known exactly how many victims of child exploitation there are. However, the South Yorkshire police apologized for neglecting the issue and vowed to thoroughly investigate each new case. And those were the big issues this week. So Morgan, what's going on in entertainment this week? Well, there's been a few big hackers that have been releasing nudes of big time celebrities. So let's find out more information right now. Are big celebrities releasing nudes? Ariana Grande says no. She's speaking out on Twitter saying, to everyone going on about my nudes and my M&G prices, neither are real. The FBI is continuing investigations of the hackers who post photos of a few celebrities. Stick with us for more updates. This year, Made America was in Philadelphia and Los Angeles. Were you there to see it? Well, if not, many artists performed, such as Kanye West, Pharrell Williams, Iggy Azalea, Kendrick Lamar, Rita Ora, and many more. Beyonce and Jay-Z made their appearance, of course, and thousands of fans came out even in the Philly rain. Comedian Joan Rivers was on the life support after she suffered respiratory and cardiac arrest. According to CNN, Rivers stopped breathing while she was in throat surgery on a Thursday morning. She was listed in critical condition and was taken by paramedics to the hospital. We will be thinking about you, Miss Rivers. 
That was your entertainment update this week. But next time, tune in to hear more about the popular topics of today. Now let's take a sneak peek at next week's show with our very own TED Teasers. Next time on Location News. An interview with the Cabrini College 2013 alumnus and the winner of the Will I Am Scholarship, Jaquan Beckham. And then we'll have a discussion of whether or not local businesses can survive in the days of online shopping and big box stores. Followed by coverage on Cabrini's one and only award-winning sorority, Delta Xi Pi. All this and more, only on Location News. Thanks for joining us this week. For Location News, I'm Parissa Gafari. And I'm Ricardo Shepard. Make sure to stay up to date with us on social media by following us. Simply search Location News. Have a good week, Cabrini.